Hey guys, how's it going? Joey here, back with another sport commentary. Today we're going to be showing off a new tech for melee supports that's been popping up in Korea and just all over the world. Uh, we're going to be showing two new technologies. I mean, not, one of them is not really new technology, it's a little bit old technology that came back as uh, Slay's been kind of fallen off for melee supports over the past couple of patches and with the changes to PTA not affecting... Um, Allies for amp damage, Bloodsong has actually ran rampant in the support role in melee supports. It's actually by far the best win rate on, I think, almost every single melee support by like a few percentage points. So really strong. Are we getting ganked or are they just trolling? Just trolling. Okay, chill. Never can tell if I'm getting level two ganked in this elo. Love that. Uh, I want to hit the wave. But I don't want to get hit. Uh, what do you have? Exhaust? Sure. Probably not a force on R2 here. Actually, honestly, it's probably fine. And I'm just strong enough to like kind of 1v2 them with W and shield bath, or with W, There's no shield bath, bash, uh, not bad. Anyway, finishing talking about us, I uh, wanted to say the Blood Song really strong on melee supports, so we're going to show that off, as well as Warmog's Rush has become very popular on melee supports. The reason it's become so popular is because you are able to get such an insane amount of HP early on in the game, which feels amazing. Which is kind of what you want on supports in general, is just flat HP, it does feel quite good. Um, as well as the fact that... When Warmogs is active, it basically gives you like a Moby Boot pack of now. And they changed that on season 14. And it's just kind of caught on now that people are kind of building it. Now that Warmogs is, or Knight's Vow has kind of fallen off as the best item, a lot of melee supports are just rushing Warmogs. Um, and I think it's felt really good, honestly. So I wanted to show you guys it. Uh, new technology, kind of. Uh, give it a go and kind of see what you guys think about it. If you guys have tried or do try it, let me know. But yeah, let's get into the actual commentary of the video rather than just talk about random items. Uh, so far, not really the greatest lane state for us. We are going to have our jungler come down here, which is just going to result in us getting a kill, uh, which is pretty chill for us. This uh, luck should almost always die here. I'm going to peel the cane here if I can. Doink. I don't think I needed to do that, but it's chill. We do need the gold. It's fine. Smile. What the fuck is this guy doing? Oh, I should have hit the wall. Yes, I should not take the kill from AD carry. I know. I don't need the backseat. It's fine. Bit of a yoink. It was there in case he was griefing, but it ended up being fine. Not really great. I'm not going to reset here because of Jin W and Lux, uh, Lux being able to stop me. Okay, so when you do this build, you can either rush tier 2 boots or just sit on tier 1. Both are honestly fine, uh, because we're probably going to be playing... Let's just do this. Might as well buy a refillable pot as well. So I got the double boss. Feels happy, man. Happy G. They're going to just reset here from bot from Jin, so it's a good time for me to just go affect the map. When you're coming out of base, you should always kind of look at lanes and see if you can affect anything and if you need to go back bot. Usually you don't need to go back bot if the enemy AD carry is going for a reset on the wave. You can kind of tell that based on conditions and whether or not they've actually spent their gold. Oh, fuck. Uh, you're dead to Nefuri, aren't you? You have flash? No, no flash. That's a bit unfortunate. Brother. Brother. I, mean, I don't know what you're doing. Unfortunately, he did not see the uh, enemy support roaming over the infinite vision. <laughs> I guess I will yoink the XP here, but unfortunate. I guess I could have been faster to that if I was paying a bit more attention to where I should roam from base, but I was kind of talking, which is not great. Uh, he can get the XP, it's chill. We're going to run back to bottom lane here and help Radiator crash the wave. Mm -hmm. Not too good. Look for hex flash here from the side. Gonna get nothing. I am down to fight because my jungler's bot and their jungler's top. This Lex is just really trolling the positioning here. Oops, we should be diving. Uh, I could start here and it's fine. I just want to make sure I'm ready to drop aggro. Oh fuck, I dropped aggro one creep too early. 
Okay, it didn't end up mattering. Our AD carry is kind of trolling. That's fine. Ended up being not great. I wanted to get one more tower auto in there before I reset the aggro, but I thought I was going to get rooted by the Jin, so I just hooked out. Alright, back home we go. Uh, since Tabia are insane value this game, I am just going to buy Tabia as fast as I can. Uh, it kind of depends game to game. If you don't feel like getting any tier 2 boots is going to feel amazing for you, then honestly not getting one is fine. And just going straight for the War Monks as fast as you possibly can. Because that is the goal of the War Monks in general. Is the rush feels really amazing because the second you get it you just feel so enabled on the map because any play you make if you like get chunked out a little bit or anything like that you just regen to full hp and you're just vibing i don't know why i'm coming to mid ever i just don't think it's good to ever go mid anymore uh he's just too weak relative to the nefiri nefari whatever it is and bolin's winning now our matchup like pretty hard so playing around your ad carry when you're ahead is generally good by the way I highly recommend it. And trying to avoid losing lanes, also kind of good. Unless you can actually salvage them. But I don't think I can really salvage the mid matchup because of how it is right now. I could probably come there when I'm 6 and look for something then. But as it stands now, I'm just not going to be able to do anything. Uh, generally, when you're playing melee supports, you don't want to be like showing for no reason. Uh, chill. I didn't use my W there, so that could have been a bit of a better trade. We saw uh, their cane on top side, I'm pretty sure. So I want to look for another hook here. Okay, we'll juke in. Just kind of get a good trade. And then I wanted my Caitlyn to kind of ult here low key. Kane could easily be coming to bot. We aren't really in the greatest condition to 2v3. Maybe if we had like... Uh, yo, yo, yo. What the fuck? Okay, you're just trolling. You try to peel him. I don't know how the champion works, to be completely honest with you. It's never played in Hyula, so I just have no idea like what I'm doing versus that little rat of a champion. Uh, but that's fine. All right, from reset here. Wait, where is it? From reset here, we're going to buy Moon Wing Plate. Do, do, do. And probably going to look to go either top or mid. Um, our mid laner is probably going to go for a reset. Top might be a little bit too far of a roam, and it looks like we're going to fight bot side, so I'll probably just try to match the cane here um, on this dragon. This fight might go a little bit longer than I want it to go. Okay, we got that, which is fine. We don't want this to extend for too long, to be completely honest with you, because our uh, AD carry is in reset. Just being here to kind of cover the timer and make sure no thing, nothing else bad happens is just overall good. Um, yeah, that's why you kind of path out from mid most of the time from support. You just have more options. Like, it would have been fine for me to go top. There's a fight top. Also would have had a game impact. But if I don't go bot there, we're just going to lose a lot on our uh, jungler. Since I'm so tanky and strong already in the early game, I'm just going to hook in even when I, it's like not good for my AD carry. It's always going to be good for me right now just because they don't do any damage to me. I'm just stopping the resets. I'm just trying to be as annoying as I possibly can. Punish every little mistake that your opponent makes um, stuff like that. This account that I'm playing on right now is only in like master tier elo. Um, I'm kind of didn't really feel like playing on my main today. I'm not sure if you guys care about these types of videos. Like, usually I ask for, like, user interaction and stuff like that. But I'm actually just genuinely curious about people who watch my videos. If they care what ELO I'm playing in. Um, because there's, like, benefits and downsides to doing both. If I play a lower ELO, I can uh, show off, like, how to abuse bad players' mistakes more often. And show you how to get leads easier. Um, whereas, like... If I'm playing at higher ELO games, like the game quality will be a better and stuff like that. I'll be playing versus better players is more realistic and it will be kind of harder for me to make videos, which I don't really mind uh, posting less because of that. But if I do post more like Masters games, Diamond games, it's just easier to create videos because things work out a lot more often. I should be roaming for Grubbies here nine out of ten times, but I think with how strong we are bot, I'm just not going to go for it. I'm just going to play for the 2v2 because we're against Deluxe. Um, this guy just has to flash here or he dies, but no flash, unfortunately. What are you doing? Just go get your wave, man. 
But yeah, I could I could easily roam. It's just like I said, I don't know. I like playing for my matchup when you're this far ahead, and I don't really feel too confident playing to roam. I mean, I, it's probably good to roam in a lot of these situations, to be completely honest with you. And Jin is so broken. Traps are so annoying for when you want to push. Hitting tower like that is actually really bad, by the way. Um, the reason it's bad is because now enemy support has a timer on me. I'm just gonna reset or sit in the bush and hope that I don't get seen. That shouldn't have seen me. Kane's coming bot, so I have one short trade timer here if I want it. Should have known that she was stepping up. Alright, we just take reset now because Kane's coming to our side, and I will just buy a giant belt. Although 50, 1, 350. Wait, they're the same, right? Yeah. Because this is 350, this is 250. Yeah, okay, same. Same. Nice, nice game. Solari Nautilus. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm playing for a fun build. Solari is good in certain games over uh, Warmogs, but I'd probably say it when it's like Karthus and stuff like that. I'm not going to do it this game. Like, I could build completely around my 80k and like try from 80k to 1v9, but I do want to show off the build itself. Um, I think that Knight's Vow is just kind of not that amazing of an item unless they have a fuck ton of assassins, which they do this game. Like, this is definitely one of the games where I would warrant pivoting off this build. Um, and just saying like, oh, it's just gonna be better for me to build stuff that's gonna help my AD carry because he's, they're so fed and the enemy assassins are fed and they have so many assassins on the enemy team um, that like Locket and Knight's Vow do provide an insane amount of value to my ADC. But I do want to show off the value of uh, Warbogs and just the new item in general. So that's why I probably won't go for it. Right, we gotta go back bot. But I guess in doing that, if I played the map more, it'd be easier for me to carry because I'm setting them farther behind, which I'm just not doing. I'm just kind of playing in my in my own space, the own bot lane hemisphere. See so if you're in the bush. Nope. All right. Well, I don't think they're in the bush anymore, so I'm just gonna go roam again. I'm a jungler's resetting. I'm gonna reset. A uh, small thing you can look out for when you play support is if your teammates are resetting, make sure that you reset. Uh, try to stay on map when they are on map. When they are not on map, try to not be on map, if that makes sense. Um, I could have sold this for a health bot and their health group here still be fine. But yeah, in general, try to stay... Oh, you're dead. Do, do, do. Try to join the map when your team's on the map. There, my AD carry tried to play the game while her team's reset, so they will die. Crazy. Crazy concept. Uh, what is this, man? Oh, man. Fuck the Fury Dogs. Hmm. I'm getting dove under my mid tier 2. <laughs> At 14 minutes into the game. Not looking hot, not looking hot. Mm. That is fine. I think we scale well enough as it is, so we should be okay. Do, do, do. Anyway, AD carry or support so you can use Blood Song on that feels really good right now. Uh, Poppy Nautilus, Leona, uh, Iron Taric in some games is probably fine as well. I don't think other melees. You can even do Alistar and Rel and stuff like that as well. Oh, what the fuck? This guy doesn't have ulti, so he should just die, no? What the fuck? No damage? Okay, some damage. Uh, play with our AD carry here. We're going a little too deep, so it's hard for AD carry to really join. Oh, yo! 
Free gin kill. Get him, boys. Oh, AD carry didn't auto attack. What the fuck? Ah! This game champion's so annoying, man. Okay, I'm gonna go catch Bolt Wave. I'm dying to just dive him if he does. Oh, I'm trolling. I tried to hook the wall there. <laughs> I should have just hooked the Yone, it would have just been infinitely better. Wait, they win this, like, really hard, no? I guess not. Yeah, chill. Alright, well, our Warmogs is activated, and if you're wondering, you do activate Warmogs without this Ruby Crystal at level 9, as long as you have Overgrowth. Overgrowth is really important to the bonus health um, that you get for it. Sorry, it has nothing to do with uh, with uh, overgrowth or er, with with levels, but yeah, but you do get it without it as long as you have overgrowth. So it's really important that you take overgrowth. Don't take unflinching ever. That rune is absolute dog shit, by the way. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but unflinching is just a terrible rune that you should almost never take. Uh, overgrowth just always outscales it or does better than it in basically every single situation that ever exists, except for like level one, which is kind of crazy. Or that's how the math used to be, and I don't think they've changed over very unflinching so kind of keep that in mind our ad carry being bought is kind of tragic the fact that we have no tbs kind of sucks not having tp mid i've learned is just so annoying in solo queue just the game in general because how you can play the game like you have to play so much more through side lanes and stuff like that when you don't have tps and it's kind of annoying uh but we do have the mobies here then check out the movement speed that you get from this um with tank boots i'm going 444 which is incredibly fast especially since i don't have frontlands hunter or anything like that you just are zooming around the map like this guy 414 this guy is 490 but i don't think that's right i think he had stacks or something i don't really want to look for the all-in on the yone but we can man i mean i have ignite so it makes it like kind of fine I'm trying to bait here i mean they're going on a nautilus guys guys where's my fuck is my team coming wait what i'm confused Their Jin is bots. They're invading our topside jungle. This should be like the most insane fight ever for us. I'm kind of confused where our team was in any of that. I'll have to go back. Maybe I was going a little bit too early, but I feel like I pinged that if my team ran there straight away, it was going to be really insane. Maybe I'm wrong? I mean, it seems good still. Regardless of what happened, we killed their three assassins on topside and we traded two for three for two. Okay, four for two. I mean, it was overall still good. Can we kill it in time? Oh, four for three. Unfortunate. It still overall was good, but I expected it to be much better. But maybe I just misread the situation. I kind of want to look back on that one. Um, just to see. All right, Baron spawning. We're going to drop our wards on the top side. Our team's going to reset here. So what I'm going to do is like a fast timer. Um, since our team will reset after, like, this, we just got a good fight and stuff like that. It's like, I don't want to look on this guy. We have so much gold in our pocket and stuff like that. I'm just going to come out of ma come out of base, drop my wards basically instantly, and kind of just look to reset immediately. This is something you can do when your team is going to be not playing the map. Like I said, you want to be playing the map when your team plays the map. So this is my Caitlyn's not going to be on map, and she's our strongest teammate. I'm just going to back with her, get more wards, refresh the wards, all that good stuff. I have wards already dropped, and I can just play to whatever side that I want to play to. Uh, in this situation, I'm just going to go to top side. The reason I'm going to top side is because there's a minute and 20 seconds before Dragon, so I have a small window where I can try to make a quick pick onto top side, as well as allow our Anivia to push out top before the Dragon is really important, um, so that we don't like lose CS or someone has to be top after Dragon. So after that, our Anivia should just move down. She should just leave the wave at even. Uh, which kind of sucks to leave it at even like that. Wait, what the fuck are they doing? What are they hitting? A ward? I guess a ward. Um, yo, what is happening over here? Uh, I don't really want to flash in. Good dice to my ignite. Uh, I will kill the Lux here. 
for the looks. We'll kill herself here. Very chill. All right, let's check out some numbers here. Bloodsong has done 700 extra damage. That's kind of lightweight for what you normally get on this, to be honest with you. Generally, it just outperforms Celestial Opposition by a lot, um, which I haven't really done too many great things with it. But it is nice, the extra damage and amp. Which does feel great. Uh, here, we could probably do Baron before we reset. Okay, we're going to reset first. Like I said, I'm just going to match my timer as much as I can with the strongest member of my team, which in this case is, of course, the uh, Caitlyn. And yeah. Usually, Warmog's especially good into, like, full poke champions as well. Uh, a lot of comps right now, people are playing poke champions like Quay, um, and you get a lot more value from it. This game just kind of being, like I said, a little bit of a bad example for the Warmogs to begin with, because they are playing so many assassins, it's not like there's going to be a lot of situations where I'm getting a lot of value from, like, the Warmogs healing. Wink. You kill with the hook, no one gets mad. Win trading Lux. I'm pretty sure... no. The Lux is not very good, so maybe. I'm gonna find the enemy jungler. There's the Yone. Fuck, this is a Fury Champion. I want a Flash Hook, but I actually don't think I can kill. Or like, I'll hit. Rather. Those the dogs. Oh my god, I almost landed that. Guess we're just looking for the quick little ender, you know, here. Yo. That might look for me. We just one shot this guy, I guess. I don't know what we're scared of. The champion sucks. There's a reason nobody plays it. Actually, that's not true. The champion actually isn't that bad. I'm pretty sure the Fury's win rate is really high, but nobody likes playing the champion because it's really boring. Or, like, not enjoyable. No. The Fury is at 54% win rate. That's, that's really high. But I'm telling you, just nobody enjoys playing the champ. So it's like, eh. Like, they buffed it when it was sitting at, like, a 53% win rate. Because that's just, like, how low the play rate is. Like, nobody enjoys playing the Fury. Nefari, whatever it is. Alright, not bad. Don't really want to be here for too long. Uh, they're kind of spawning. Is there a cane somewhere around here? Ech, cringe. I had to carry so dead. Not dead. Alive. Dead? Really tried my best to save. Oh my god, man. What's the point of the war mogs? I can't get it off to show you guys how broken it is. I'm telling you it's OP. I promise you, I promise you. But like I said, I don't think it was really the bestest game to show off. I do think it's really strong. Just like, even without the war mogs passive, like just the fact that you're getting the movement speed from it feels really, really fucking good, to be completely honest with you. Um, it's like half the reason that I'm buying it. So, yeah. Uh, I do want to try to get another game of this, but I also want to upload a video because I haven't uploaded in like three days. So maybe I'll upload something in between. Uh, just check the video uh, length to see if this is the end of the video. Probably not. Um, if you guys are enjoying the videos, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate it a lot. Hope to see you guys um, in the next one if this is the only one-parter, but it should be a two-parter.